Hey guys, what's going on? It's If You Have to Pick 3, I'm Matt. And I'm Zach. If you haven't joined us for one of these before, what we essentially do is we pick a topic, and then each of us pick a top three, we fight it out for the final top three list, and there you go. That's pretty much what we do. A lot it's, of egos and emotions are bruised in the process. There but were lawyers the the, at yeah, some point lawyers. in time. In the end of the day, we have fun. Yeah. After all of that. After all that. So, Zach, <laughs> what are we going over today? So... Believe it or not, this year, 2019, marks 50 years since Led Zeppelin released their first album. Uh, and whether you like the band or not, there is no denying Led Zeppelin's influence in rock music. Or they were influential? Huge. Hugely sure. influential. I mean... Beyond even rock, dare I say. I mean, I, I think Greta Van Fleet had a huge influence on Zeppelin. Oh, snap! Oh, shots fired. Let the comments roll. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, the whole year is really going to probably be a celebration, uh, no pun intended, of Led Zeppelin. So we thought it would be a lot of fun to name the top three Led Zeppelin songs of all time. Dot, that dot, dot, are not Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. So if you recall, uh, we previously did an episode kind of similar to this where we named the the three best songs from Queen that were not named Bohemian Rhapsody. Because kind of like Bohemian Rhapsody, Stairway to Heaven is just one of those all-time great songs. So much so that you go into a music shop or a, or a instrument store and if you start playing that song, you'll be kicked out immediately. Oh, Stairway. Denied. <laughs> and we can't tell you the name of that movie because of copyright issues. No, um, <laughs> but like literally because... It is such an iconic and well-known song to the point where even at the height of when it, it was first released and its popularity, it was so overplayed. My dad, who I think is going to disown me for doing this episode, um, he hates Led Zeppelin with a fiery passion simply because the band was so overplayed when they first came out. Uh, they were so massive and he would tell me the story of how he would be in college and his roommate would try to start playing Stairway to Heaven on acoustic guitar only to have other people on the floor run into the room and shout at him and to tell him to stop playing Stairway to Heaven. Um, and that's the PG version of that story. So just to give you an idea, I mean, we love Stairway to Heaven. It's an iconic song. Um, we, As we mentioned in a previous episode, we're actually both really excited uh, to, to hear Mastodon's cover of the song. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go first, Matt. All right, I'll let you go this time. Well, thank you. So, here is the first of three songs that I think are just Led Zeppelin's best. First one being, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. Now, technically, this is not really an original song of theirs. You can make the argument that most Led Zeppelin songs are not actually original and just rip off songs of blues songs. Um, but... Let the this hate is, flow through you. <laughs> but this is really uh, a rearrangement of a song that was originally done by Anne Brandon in the 1950s and then covered uh, by Joan Baez. In fact, I'm th pretty sure that not only is this more of a cover of Joan, Baez, uh, Joe, Joan Baez's rendition, but it was actually one of Page and Plant's first songs that they collaborated on together. And it really does capture what made the band so interesting especially at the time it, it weaved together folk influences with a little bit more of a heavy rock stomp to it um you could actually make the argument that it was a great predecessor to stairway to heaven uh so babe i'm gonna leave you my first pick second pick ramble on um Ramble again, on. Sing my song. literally another example of just you know an awesome mix of you know, soothing folk with in-your-face rock. I mean, it's just a fun... It, one of those songs that you listen to it and you can't help but feel like you're in a really awesome mood. It's like a really great car song. It's just, you know, it's not making you speed. It's just making you really feel at ease. It's a, almost a really great example of the 70s and what 70s rock was. The third pick I'm going with, Immigrant Song. It's just such an epic, awesome song. I mean, even without the Norse mythology influences that you hear in the lyrics and even in some of the, the Robin Plant screams, it's so awesome. I mean, 
it's still used in movies and television shows and it just gets you pumped up it's it's kind of hard when original versions of certain songs for them to keep the like same energy after so many years and times have passed and it's even the original recording of that song still just makes you feel so pumped up and just ready to like kick butt um so immigrant song so to recap babe i'm gonna leave you ramble on an immigrant song those are my final three and i think or at least those are my three songs which i'm pretty sure i would argue could be in the top final three as well so matt uh, i don't like that statement oh i'm making that statement well let's play immigrant song and see how how far we get well so what are what is your three then all right well We'll just get this out of the way. Yes, the immigrant song was on there. Ha ha! So, in the final three already. Uh, number two. Well, hold on. So, do you want to explain why you love that song, or did well, I do such an amazing job at explaining? Well, you did. I mean, I I do like the because to me the song, and I I don't know why this is, but every time I hear the song, I just think that it's cold. Besides the lyric we come from the land of the ice and snow but it just feels like a cold song and all of the Norse mythology that was written actually while they were in Norway on tour mm. so uh, it, it just it feels like you know a, a, not only just a winter song but it's a great driving song uh, it it's just a great song all the way through I mean there, there's really not much else to say about it it's just an amazing song so that's your first pick that's number one number two ah this is hard because I wrote down a bunch of them. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to go with this one. Just because I love the feel of this song, and a lot of people are probably going to be like, what the hell are you putting this on the list for? Uh, I'm going with Down by the Seaside mm. off of Physical Graffiti. Okay. So it's a very different sort of feel for the band, and this is one of the things that I've always loved about Zeppelin is that they have the ability to be that straight-on 70s rock band, you know, you need a great you need a great rock song, you go to Zeppelin, but they also do all of this other more intricate stuff, kind of like what the Beatles did later on in their career, and this is one of those songs. It's just got this very melodic, lazy feel in the beginning of the song, and then the tempo picks up a little bit Kind of like, you know, you're sitting out on the beach all day, you know, you wanted to just chill out, and then it picks up a little bit, you know, you're going into your night, and then it slows down a little bit at the end of the night. It just got this really nice feel like that you're, that you're on vacation wherever you're listening to the song. Hmm. Um, it was put out, I believe, maybe as a single somewhere. I could be completely wrong about that, but um, it's just a great song all the way through, in my opinion. Okay, so third pick then. The third pick, and this is going to be the hardest one. Um, <laughs> setting yourself up for failure, it sounds not like. Not setting myself up for failure. It's just I've got two great songs. Because one was uh, hey. a, a single. Okay. And the other one is just a great song. All right, let's go with The Ocean. That's going to be my third pick. Okay. All right, so first and foremost, for anybody who's ever heard the Beastie Boys song, She's Crafty. That is uh, the riff that's in that particular song. Um, the song is actually really well recorded too. So um, on Houses of the Holy, obviously, but um, when it was recorded, it's like recorded in such a way where it feels like it's a much newer recording than the way than what it actually is. The guitar sound on here is just so pitched, and the riff is just like I said, it's it's catchy, and you know caught the ear of the Beastie Boys. And you would think Zeppelin, Beastie Boys, really not going to work, but it does, and it works really, really well. Um, and another couple of you know, interesting little tidbits about the song. Um, in the last line, uh, Plant references the girl who won my heart. And this is kind of odd considering the artwork on the album, but the girl who won his heart was his daughter at the time, who was born back in 68, this was recorded in 71, 72, so she was really young at the time. And then the the young naked girls on the cover. That's it, awkward. It, it's it's kind of weird. but Well, I mean, I think the whole band's history of young girls is also a little awkward. In yeah, general. right. But, but let's, let's move on. Right, but um, the song, I mean, it's just really, really fun and just really moving to me I mean it's it's always like forward progression it's in a weird interesting time signature I think it's called septuple meter is what the the song was recorded in it, it's just so 
it's so weird, but works so well. It's like, I believe if my understanding of the theory behind septuple meter is it's four, four and a bar of eight. It's something along that, that, that time signature, but it, the way that it's recorded and the way that it feels with that odd time signature, it just leads to a very different sounding Zeppelin song. It's not your typical, you know, like, like rock and roll, very straightforward. Anything on Zeppelin one was very bluesy influenced. This one kind of took a shift to something new. And once again, I always applauded Zeppelin for doing something really different. So I'm going to actually be, I'm going to propose something in regards to the final three. Uh Uh-oh. Before I do though, I want to ask what might be a hot button question. Um, And this might blur the line between uh, what we typically do in a, in a, am I missing something episode? But do you think Matt, that to a certain degree, Led Zeppelin is a little overrated? Do I think Zeppelin is overrated? I'm going to ask you why you're asking that question. Well, because you can make the argument that a good chunk of Led Zeppelin songs were ripoffs of blues standards. Um, you could also make the argument that it could, you know, Led Zeppelin just had a really good machine behind them in the 70s. I mean, I also ask because while there's definitely, I mean, do we remember Zeppelin so fondly just because they were so over, like, because they were so constantly played in the 70s? Or do we think that, you know, they've kind of outshadowed a lot of other bands who maybe were a little bit better? Hmm. I don't know. And here's the reason why is because uh, obviously I wasn't around for that. <laughs> but I think that the songwriting and the way that Zeppelin, yeah, you can make the argument that they were, uh, you know, they, they ripped off some blues and things like that. Um, even I believe it was a few years ago, uh, a 70s band Spirit said that they ripped yeah. off um, Stairway to Heaven from them. But I really think that why Zeppelin is so fondly remembered is almost the same reason as the Beatles. Hmm. Yeah, you can make the argument that the Beatles, they, you know, they were just taking songs from earlier acts and then making them their own, but they did it and they did it better. You know, so like, really twi- the- like Twist and Shout. Yeah. That, that was that wasn't their song. They did yeah. it. They covered it, they and it, it was like, oh my god, this is this is our song. And we talked about this in another previous episode of uh, what we thought the best cover songs mm-hmm. of all time were. But I think when you get down to like Zeppelin and brass tacks here, I think because Zeppelin not only took some songs, made them their own, or took some riffs and licks and and you know repurpose some blues because blues is a, really a feeling. Yeah. It's not really a a thing that's you know hard and stamp like you know I could I could write a song but it could be a really like meaningful heartfelt song and a bomb feeling and it's the blues. There's no rules to the blues. It's just I think certain music purists say that the blues is, well, it's got to be this, it's got to be that, and, you know, if you take from this person and do this and do that, okay, then, you, then you're ripping them off, but no, the blues is about a feeling, because it, I, from my understanding, and I'm not the biggest fan of the blues, but <laughs> from my understanding of the blues, it was just people playing because they wanted to get out their expression, and it wasn't necessarily that it was in certain chords or certain signatures, and it wasn't written in a certain way, it's just expressing how you feel because there's something that is wrong and there's something some injustice that you're feeling and you want to make light of that and you want to just get it off your chest so what them doing the blues it's just it's really them being them Mm -hmm. so i would go down that road and saying yeah okay maybe it sounds similar to something Everybody is so influenced by everybody else in music, and, and that's really the encompassment of music. Hell, I mean, we talked about Greta Van Fleet in another episode. I made the joke at the beginning of this. Yeah. But, I mean, if Greta Van Fleet isn't directly influenced by Led Zeppelin, and a lot of people are making the argument that they're ripped off, but some people are saying that, no, they're just this new band, they're doing their thing. Okay, then if they're doing their thing... And Zeppelin did their thing, and they kind of sound the same. Where do their roots lie? Their roots lie in the blues. So 
I would say they're doing their own thing. Then when they take the turn and they start doing something different, nobody really criticizes that part of it. You know, I I don't, t- and I'm sure that the world wide webs of the internet are going <laughs> to let me know whether or not I'm right <laughs> or wrong about this. And let us know on social media. Um, that when Zeppelin started to take their turn and they started to do something a little bit different, like on Houses of the Holy with, with Ocean, um, or um, like, I was going to say the song that you picked, but um, we're, we're not going to go there because that was a cover. Um, but like yeah. Down by the Seaside or um, one of my other picks was Fool in the Rain. Those songs were very different and nobody criticized them for it. It's just because you took yourself in the beginning and rooted yourself so in the blues that it was hard to see you know, the difference between what they did and what somebody else did. Um, I have a feeling that a lot of people who especially are, like I said, the purists, they're like, um, yeah, that's very similar to somebody else. But I think that those people are kind of jaded by it. But other people who are looking at the band for the band and what the band did, I think that that's the fond memories that a lot of people have. I would also argue um, in support of Led Zeppelin in that while they might have been rooted, like you said, like doing just the blues a little bit better, but also just the musicianship. Um, there is no doubt that each member of Led Zeppelin were monsters and just incredibly talented people who brought something different to their instruments. Uh, right, and John Bonham is so frequently referenced as one of the greatest drummers yeah. of all time who never really got to live out his full potential because, he, you know, he died. But but even John Paul Jones, I think, is probably one of the most underrated members of oh, Led Zeppelin. absolutely. Like, I think he doesn't get enough credit, and I'm sure he'd be the first to even admit, to say this too, because like in the 90s when... Uh, Plant and Page would do their own thing together. John Paul Jones would always get kind of left out, and unfairly too, because he not only did uh, had an incredible bass sound and approach to bass, but he brought in a lot more of the orchestral elements to the band. He brought in a lot more of the keyboards and the organs, um, and he he gave the band a lot more depth than I think a lot of people realize or give him credit for. Um, so musicianship wise, I think they definitely deserve it. And I think that's Mm -hmm. kind of going back to the, without going back to Greta Van Fleet, even though we're going back to Greta Van Fleet, that's what kind of made, like to me separates them from Led Zeppelin. And maybe hopefully Greta Van Fleet blues us all wrong in that over the years, they will develop into being better musicians, into being, you know, more stronger players in general. But to me, I just, to me, it just, it doesn't, the musicianship, they they're trying to capture what Led Zeppelin had, the magic, but it's still nowhere close. And, what, and, and I'm going to say one last thing about them, and then we're just going to leave it at that. Yeah. At some point in time, you will have to run out of Led Zeppelin songs that they did in the base of the blues. Then where do you go from there? Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. All right. So back to the purpose of this episode. I mentioned before we went into this fun little tangent uh, that I had a proposition for you. In regards to the final pick three. Yep. To recap, we both said Immigrant Song. Yep, that's already on there. I said Ramble On. Yep. And Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. And you said... I said uh, Down by the Seaside and The Ocean. So here's my proposition. So Immigrant Song is definitely in the top three. Yes. In fact, let's just put a big old number one in front of that. Number one. Check. For the remaining two, I will give you The Ocean. Okay. If you give me Ramble On. And I think that those three actually really do do a great job at highlighting every aspect of what makes that band special. And you know what? I will give you that, and I'll, I'll go with that, because Ramble On is such a staple off of uh, Zeppelin Two. Yeah. It's got s- such presence on radio. And what I'm really actually surprised about is for the amount of times that um, Stairway to Heaven has been played on radio, that's a newer album than Zeppelin Two, and and you can make the argument that Ramble On is probably played just as much, if not more, than Stairway to Heaven at this point in time. Possibly. Well, because I think, because when you think of Led Zeppelin 2, you really think of Whole lot of Love, which is, I, I, there's really two songs that kind of pop out as, as soon as you hear it, you're going to always hear it on the radio, and it's Stairway to Heaven and Whole lot of Love. Like, to the point where Whole lot of Love is also, you can even name this episode, songs that aren't named Whole lot of Love, because it's such an easy song to go to because it's so good but like so overplayed but I think Ramble On gets a lot of radio play because it's almost like a well it's not a whole lot of love so let's play Ramble On like it's right. so, I don't want to say it's the B-side to that album because it's definitely not the B-side to that album but it's almost like the deeper cut 
to play off of that album. I mean, there's a lot of other songs on that album, too. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows at this point, but we're, I'll just recap real quick. A uh, Whole Lot of Love, What Is and What Should Be, or excuse me, What Is and What Should Never Be, uh, The Lemon Song, Thank You, Heartbreaker, Livin' Lovin', Ramble On, Moby Dick, Bring It On Home. So, yeah. I mean, but st- I think there's just a lot of quality material on that album. But still, Ramble On, I feel, is like always like, all right, we, we already played Whole Lot of Love twice today. Let's play a different song. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the go-to. And mm-hmm. it's a great go-to song. So the recap then, it sounds like we didn't have to do too much fighting today, which I is I think great. we're just tired from when we broke the couch. It's true. And I'm sorry again about that. Once again, if you can find the YouTube video, yeah. go watch that. Yeah. it's. I'm not proud of how, what I did to that couch. And I'm sorry to Ikea. I think I said a lot of crazy things about Ikea and their couches, too, during that. Um, Mainly because we had to figure out how to put it back together. Yeah. They do their best with the instructions, but it's really hard to follow. Anyway, um, so the final three. Greatest Led Zeppelin songs that are not Stairway to Heaven are Immigrant Song, The Ocean, and Ramble On. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think we talked way too much about Greta Van Fleet in this episode? Let us know on social media. (laughs) Make your opinion heard on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even YouTube at Epic Footnote. We want to hear from you, and we hope that you tune in for another episode from us. Take it easy, guys. Thanks, everyone. 